guys. So this is going to be probably a somewhat longer video um, where we're going to kind of just take most of the techniques of acrylic pouring and we're going to put them all together. Now there are like a billion unlimited ways to do acrylic pouring, so we can't do all of them, but I'm going to do my best. Um, so first of all, there is uh, what is acrylic pouring? A pouring is just fluid painting. So you're using the fluidity of a painting to create um, let's see, you know, just really cool abstract designs. You can even do a more controlled pour. Um, usually you would do it on canvas. You can do them on anything though. You can do them on wood, really anything. So then there is pouring medium. Um, this is a popular one. It is called the Floetrol. It's a paint conditioner. You mix it with your paint and it makes it more fluid and helps the, the paint bind together a little bit more as well. You also have Liquitex Pouring Medium. You've got Golden GAC 800. These are a little more expensive options. And then you can even use glue um, or there's, there's other things. Um, if you wanna go for cheaper, something like Floetrol is definitely quite cheap or glue, of course. So those are some different mediums you can mix your paints with. So then there are types of paint. Um, I like to use these. These are Artist Loft Flow Acrylics. They mix really well with the pouring mediums and I just really like them. They maintain a bright color. Then there's your regular, uh, you know, acrylic paint, really any kind. Um, then you can even use craft paint if you wanna go a little bit cheaper. Um, and then if you wanna go even more expensive, which I don't have these because I haven't been willing to spend the money, but there are also specifically fluid paints like by Golden that are really for acrylic pouring. Um, like I said, I haven't invested that much. Um, then there is silicone. Silicone you can add into your paint to uh, help produce cells. Now I've been asked, what are cells? Um, these little circular kind of things, these are cells. So in painting, those are what we mean when we call cells. So the uh, silicone can help produce that. There's many different kinds of silicone. I use the treadmill. This is spot on brand, 100% silicone. But once again, you can use WD-40. You can even use dish soap. So there's endless options there as well. Okay, now we're gonna go into some different techniques. Um, one of my favorites is called a dirty pour. A dirty pour is when you mix all of the paint into one cup, like so. So I've got, I'm gonna do some white, some red, yellow, blue, and we'll throw just a little bit of black into there. For all of these uh, painting demonstrations tonight, I'm not gonna use any silicone, just to let you know. Um, so I'm gonna move these cups out of the way. So at this point, this is what we call a dirty cup. I'm gonna put a little bit more white in there. Now there's several things you can do with a dirty cup. One is you can just pour it onto the canvas. The other is what's called a flip cup. And that is when you put your canvas here and you flip it, literally. So that is a flip cup. That's one of my favorite techniques. It is definitely one of the easiest. You know, you can get all kinds of cool things and then you just pull it out. And with all of these, there's generally a technique called tilting. Tilting is literally what it means. <laughs> You're just going to tilt your canvas so that you can get all of the edges covered. Okay. There you go. We just did a dirty pour with a flip cup. And these, once again, would be called cells. There are little cells here. 
and the paint will continue to move because it is fluid, so more cells will likely pop up. Okay, now we're going to do what's called a clean pour. So a clean pour is pretty much just like it sounds. You're just pouring each color individually onto the canvas. Um, you can do it in any kind of pattern or not. Um, and you could also do what's called a puddle pour, which I will show you, which you're going to literally pour the paint into puddles. This would be a puddle pour. Whoop, that was a little bit much. <laughs> um, so that's also a clean pour. Um, and yeah, this can definitely be cool, um, but sometimes it's just not as exciting. You're less likely to get cell production. Um, and some people like to do what's called a swipe through. So they would take their finger and literally swipe their finger through, which can help with cell production. Don't ask me why, I really don't know. But it can also just kind of help mix the colors pretty cool. Once again, let's go ahead and tilt. We'll see how this one looks. Definitely went a little overboard on the red there, but that's okay. We're not trying to do anything super fancy here, just kind of really fast experiments so that you can really see what everything looks like. So, here's your clean pour, which as you can see, there are still cells, um, but there's not as much. Some more will pop up, but like I said, less. And while I'm on this one, I'm going to show you what is called a ribbon. Um, so I've got a little bit of paint here left from my dirty pour, and I'm going to do what's called a ribbon. So meaning I'm going to basically take a stripe and put it through there. That is called a ribbon. I am fascinated by ribbons. I really, really love them. Once again, don't ask me why. I just really like them. And that part where I swiped my finger through, that kind of created a bit of a ribbon as well. So there you have that. Clean pour. I showed you puddle pour, and then this is also ribbons. Alright, we're going to now do another technique called a swipe. Now, there are any tools that you can swipe with. Literally, um, most of them in the painting department, you can use any size. Uh, this is a palette knife. These are just various painting tools. You really use anything. You could even just use a credit card or a piece of cardboard. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use this one. Um, and there's a lot of ways you can put the paint on the canvas. Um, some people like to put like dots all over. Um, some people like to do stripes. Whoops. You can really do it any way you want. You can use any colors you want, etc. Um, the whole point is you're going to be pulling paint across paint. Um, which, because of the different densities of the paint, will produce cells. And what I mean when I say that is certain paints are heavier than others, so they sink to the bottom, which is what helps produce cells. So, you generally want to pretty much cover your surface. blue in here. Okay. You go ahead and you take your tool and you can swipe in any direction you want. See, I'm going to go this way. That's pretty cool. Um, then let's see. We can go back this way. This is a rainbow swipe. 
So there's really no rules on the directions or anything. Uh, but you can see here, along here, the cells popping up. Oops, got a little hole there. Um, and they'll continue to pop up. And while I'm on this demonstration, I'm going to go over a torch and what a torch is and what it's for. Um, so I use this little itty bitty handheld one, but you can use definitely any kind of torch. Uh, butane, I use butane. I think other people use different kinds. Um, what the torch does is it can help uh, pop some air bubbles, which can help produce cells. Sometimes it works better than others. Um, and if you have silicone in a painting, it can also help burn off the silicone, which also helps produce some cells. So this one particularly will probably keep moving a lot. As you can see, even just while I've been talking, a lot of cells have popped up. We've got some popping up over here. You know, it's going to continue to move for a while and cells will continue to pop up. So that is um, the swipe. Okay, this next one is called a flip and drag. Um, and I'm, you normally do this with like a little tiny cup. I am all out though, so I'm gonna do it with a nice big cup. Um, you do not need a lot of paint for this. And I'll show you why. It is a dirty pour. Um, So, this is, I'm sure, more than enough. Okay, good. So now that we've got all of those there, we're going to flip this over. And as part of this, we're going to go over what negative space is. So with the flip and drag, you generally are going to have some negative space. Negative space is where you don't um, you have either, you have a solid color, basically, when you have those other colors. So, we're going to do a negative space with white for this one. So, after you flip your cup, you would add your negative color here. And I'm out of paint in my cup, so I'm going to use my big tube of paint here. And you basically just want to cover this surrounding area. Okay, good. That should be enough. I'm gonna take um, I'm just gonna take my palette knife and just kind of spread this around a little bit. Just make sure we got all the space covered. Normally, you would take your time with these a bit more, but for the purpose of the video and not having it be two hours long, I'm trying to go pretty fast. Okay, so we've got all this space covered here. Now, you generally want to lift up the cup just a little bit, then move it along, and you can lift it up a little bit more. Um, I'm going to go back this way. Okay. Like I said, you normally do this with a much smaller paint cup, like one of those little tiny, like, vitamin cups, you know, really small. Um, but this is all I have right now, so it'll have to do. And then, you know, depending on how much paint you have on there, you can either leave it, or, once again, you can tilt it. I am going to tilt this a bit, and I am going to still leave negative space. But I'm going to take out some of it. I think I'm going to wrap this around here a bit. Cool. And there's really like endless shapes and patterns you can do with this technique too. Yeah. So there it is. This is a, the flip and drag. <laughs> so it's kind of a few techniques in one. It's got the dirty pour, it's got the flip cup, and then it's got the negative space. And then, of course, the, the fact of dragging it. 
So that's a quick rundown on that one. Okay, and there are about a million techniques, but we're gonna end with one more, just one more, um, just because it's one of my favorites. This is also a version of the Dirty Pour. Um, and once again, I'm gonna just use the same cup that I've been using because I don't wanna waste anything. And we're using the same colors. Um, and this I call the tree ring technique. I don't know what its like actual name would be. Um, I think that's probably good. A little more blue. these out of the way. So, just like a dirty pour, because it is a version of the dirty pour, you put all your cups into the one, all your colors into the one cup, um, and then we start with, we're going to start with a puddle of white here, which you can also cover the whole canvas with white. That works too. I just use a puddle. And then you're going to take your dirty cup and you're going to slowly go in a circle. And you just keep pouring paint right in the middle of that circle. Yep, that's really all there is to it. And I'm just going to keep going until I'm out of paint. Okay, good. And then once again, you're going to tilt. Uh, it's best to tilt this very slow, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to tilt a lot faster than I normally would, mainly because my, my camera is dying here. I'm worried about it dying. Cool. Okay. So you can probably see why I call this the tree ring technique because um, you end up with a lot of rings on your canvas just like um, a piece of a tree. There we go. Oops. Okay. I totally just dripped that on there. But you know what? I'm going to be fine with that. No, I'm not. It's going to. <laughs> That's fine. All right. So, so, I actually decided I wanted to do two more techniques real quick. Uh, this one's similar to a flip cup, but instead of using a cup, you're going to use um, some kind of tubing. This is just a toilet paper roll. Um, you can really do it with any kind of tubing. And you basically do a dirty pour in here main difference being you're not going to be flipping it because you don't need to and we're just going to fill this whole thing up and hope that that's enough paint if it's not well we'll do it again some more paint in my cups. <laughs> Alright, one second. Okay, I'm not going to add any more black because I feel like there's enough black. Oh, okay, mental note, you do have to hold this thing <laughs> or it will fall over. Oops, my bad. At 
least now I'm definitely not worried about there being enough paint. I know there will be. Okay. Come on. Okay. Let's try and get the cups out of the way while holding on to this so it didn't fall over. So here we go. Same thing like a dirty clip cup there. Um, while we're on this one, actually, I will make a note real quick with torching in that you can always uh, torch before you tilt, which some people prefer because um, maybe it can give some bigger cells instead of the littler cells that torching can kind of tend to give sometimes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and tilt here. I feel like this is enough paint. And I guess we'll find out. Yeah, this is plenty of paint. Wow, I really like this one. Cool. Okay, good. Now for the final one, I'm going to move this out of the way. One second. All right. So for the final one, we're going to do what's called a dip. Um, so I've been using this thing. And, of course, there's paint down here on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a canvas and we're literally going to dip it. Now, I've done this technique before. I don't usually like it. Um, it, I feel like, works better maybe with paper. Um, I will say one thing, though. Cups down. Okay. You can... Move this back over a little bit. You can take something like your swipe tool. And you can kind of scoop it back up. Of course, providing it's clean. And you can use it for another paint tool. So, for all you people who worry about wasting paint, um, this is definitely a viable option. You can also keep, uh, put a plastic thing underneath here, like I did. So, when the paint dries, you can just peel it off. And then you could use it to make jewelry or, you know, kind of whatever. Um, you can also use, um, well, I'm going really mind numb right now, uh, like parchment paper or wax paper to put in, under. And that's probably better because if you're doing daily pours, you would want to move that parchment paper out of the way um, between each pour which with this big plastic bin, I generally don't because I'm painting so much and the paint doesn't have time to dry for me to peel it off. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so yeah, this is what, this would be what's called a dip. So you can literally dip it in paint. Um, and as you can see, it kind of gives that marbled effect. And then, um, to supplement my dip. <laughs> I just scooped up some additional paint. Now I'm just gonna let a bit more of it run off, mainly so that I can make sure all the spots are covered. Okay. Let's see. Like I said, I don't usually do this. Um, I have seen others do it with like really great results. But for me, it's always mixed the colors in a way that I haven't really liked. Almost done with it. Um, yeah, like as you can see, there was kind of a lot of there's kind of a lot of gray in here. Um, but I can actually see some cells popping up. 
And just a reminder, no silicone was used in the making of any of these paintings. All right, so now that we're all done on that, we're going to, uh, most of these paintings have been sitting here for like 20 minutes or so. We're going to go do close-ups real quick. All right, we're going to start with a dip painting just because it's right here. So, so you can see there, there's some cells popping up there. It's okay. It's definitely not bad. It's just not really my style. Although I'm sure there are people that would love this. Okay, this was the one that we did with the to toilet paper tube. It is so cool. I apologize for the light glare. I can't really do anything about that right now. Um, yeah, I really like this one. And I'm not sure if that's because I use a roll of toilet paper or a tube of toilet paper or what, but it's so freaking cool. I just really like it. It's it's almost like a swipe. It's really cool. Okay. So we're going back to, this is the first one that we did tonight. This was just the Flip Cup Dirty Pour. So there you have that. You can see some more cells have happened. Uh, this was the Clean Pour with a ribbon in it. And once again, like you can see, some more cells have happened. This is the swipe, which I also really like. It's moved a lot. I, I have noticed one other thing, too, is that reds tend to really come out. So I can only imagine that they must be a lighter pigment. And all the other colors are sinking down below. Um, this was the uh, flip and drag. Also really, really cool. And then my, one of my favorites, the tree ring technique. I just really love this one and I could literally do it all day long. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video with just, you know, real quick rundown of a bunch of acrylic pour techniques. I am not like the most pro person by any means. But if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you have any suggestions for experiments you'd like me to do, let me know. I always love to try new things out. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time.